In today's Nonsense Wars production, we finally take a look at the Interface B. We have been trying to cover this for a very long time, but we have always run into some problem or another. While the RCX was the first widely available programmable brick, LEGO actually made two entire generations of such bricks, uh, potentially more sophisticated ones uh, before that. The 4.5 volt interface A in 1986 and the 9 volt interface B in 1993. The form factor of the interface B itself echoes that of some of the other LEGO electronics of this era, like the train speed regulator and the control center. It has a sloped front face with 13 ports, uh, nine black, four yellow, and four blue, and a single button. The back features a serial port for data and a barrel jack for power. Again, like the 9-volt regulator, the unit works with any old wall wart with the right voltage. We originally thought our unit didn't work and took it apart to inspect it. The two halves connect with four screws, but an internal ribbon cable joins them as well. To remove the daughter board from the base, we need to extract the internal screws securing the board itself and the external standoffs securing the serial connector. The main PCB has tons of little metal prongs that clip onto the many connectors on the front panel. We saw this same feature in other 9 volt programmable bricks like the RCX and CodePilot, but never in such quantity. They can be finicky to pull apart on removal and line up on installation. This particular mainboard also looked pristine. Eventually, we found out that the interface B won't work with a standard serial cable, like the one used with the Mindstorm's infrared tower. It needs a null modem cable, which has some of the leads crossed in a different way, and typically a male and female end. We actually simulated this with individual wires to test our unit before buying a proper cable. This brings us to the next problem, the software. Lego did make official software suites for the interface B, but we initially could not find any of them. More on that in a bit. Surprisingly, more than one third-party control app exists and we ended up using BrickLab, which worked with at least two versions of Windows, uh, XPN7, and several different computers, including with a USB to serial dongle. So what does the interface B actually do? Well, the eight black ports on the left output variable voltage, and the single black port in the middle outputs full voltage continuously. The yellow ports read passive sensors like the touch sensor, and the blue ports read active sensors like the light sensor. The colors of the RCX sensors, and heck, the sensors themselves, all come from the interface B. With Brick Lab, we can manually adjust the output of the black ports and drive various things from 9 volt lights to power functions motors. We can read both the passive and active sensors. Uh, their values go from 0 to 1024. Unfortunately, at least with the third party apps we tried, we can't do anything other than manually read and write to the ports. Uh, to do anything more sophisticated, we need something like Control Lab. Control Lab should allow us to program the interface B, 
hence its name. We found a copy uploaded somewhere, and it actually installed without issue on Windows XP and 7. Unfortunately, any time we tried to connect to the interface B, we got some kind of connection error, even though BrickLab would work fine with the same hardware setup. We eventually tried three different XP machines, desktops and laptops, including a very old Dell Latitude C series, and then four bar linkages, old MacBook with Windows 7 and a USB serial dongle. All of these machines could operate the interface B with BrickLab, but not with Control Lab. So, that's that. If we ever get it to work, we might do a part two. So if anyone has any ideas, post them in the comments. On that note, this is the end of the video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you like what we do and have a nice day.